This video will discuss comets. So, uh, moving away from asteroids and more rocky uh, objects to the debris in the solar system that's more icy, so the comets. The comets have very elliptical orbits generally, and consequently, um, they move from the very outer edge of the solar system where they uh, um, spend a lot of time, if you remember Kepler's second law the motion at aphelion far from the sun is slow and then as the object gets closer to the sun it speeds up so it's near the sun for a short amount of time these icy bodies as they get near the sun warm up and release gases from the ice material and also release embedded dust and sand that uh, can form tails that reflect sunlight and uh, make the comet uh, very visible to us so they are dramatic events in the sky. For a while they were thought to be in our atmosphere, but it was shown that's not the case because they do not have enough parallax. Remind yourselves what parallax is, uh, indicates distance to an object. So they don't shift around for between two observers on the sky that much to uh, be objects inside our atmosphere. They are uh, orbiting the sun and those orbits can bring them closer than Mars and that's the point where their temperatures get to the place that the ice melts inside the orbit of Mars. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the history. The clay tablet from Babylon that uh, you know I don't read their language but uh, it's reported that it describes the appearance of a comet. Um, 1066 uh, this was the uh, you know the year of the Norman invasion of England and there was a comet in the sky in April of that year and the invasion took place in October but uh, you know, people took that as in England as a bad omen and I suppose the uh, uh, people advising William the Conqueror in France took it as a good omen of uh, go ahead uh, but you know unusual events in the sky and people had a little bit of a fear of uh, what was happening here um, there's also comets uh, represented in art. I think this is around 1300, this piece of artwork. And Star of Bethlehem, this artist thought uh, was uh, a comet. A few years, er years earlier, Halley's Comet had been prominent in the sky. So that might have been the inspiration for this artist to put a comet above the uh, nativity scene. Um, 1556, a little woodcut here of a comet going across the sky. and. Uh, unsettling was the uh, general, general feeling from this. In 1687, skull and crossbones, um, you know, death, war, plague, those were kind of the uh, superstition surrounding comets, that the comets were a bad omen in the sky. They weren't understood, uh, didn't occur regularly, didn't have the motions like the planets that could be predicted or eclipses that could be predicted and uh, they got sort of a bad reputation as something uh, bad in the sky. Uh, 1858 drawings of a comet here and you recognize the Big Dipper on the right side of this and showing now some tail structure. Uh, the nucleus of the comet, the body of the comet is down here. That's where the uh, ices are and they're being melted. The gas is coming off and forming these uh, tails across the sky. Some more drawings of, of comets here and there are there are two tails, two separate tails that form. One is comprised of dust and it reflects uh, sunlight and has its own kind of orbit around the around the sun, the dust particles. Again when the earth goes through this dust debris we get a meteor shower. Um, we also have where the gas comes off of the nucleus, the uh, gas material becomes ionized and interacts with the solar wind. The solar wind, the particles streaming out from the sun, push away the ion tail, ions, uh, ionized material, push this away from the nucleus of the comet, and this acts something like a windsock. So before satellites, astronomers used the tails of comets to uh, get clues about the solar wind about the uh, streaming out of particles from the uh, from the sun through the solar system. Um, 
Halley's Comet, 1910. Uh, there was a, a good appearance of the comet for observers in the Northern Hemisphere in 1910. It wasn't quite so good in 1986 when Halley's Comet came around. Halley's Comet has a period of about 76 years. Um, again, moving fast past the sun at perihelion, so it only spends a, a few months in good visibility. And most of the time in its orbit, it's out at aphelion, moving slowly. Uh, but uh, you can see here the, the coma of the comet, this uh, sort of ball shaped at the top here. You cannot see the nucleus in this uh, photograph, um, but we have the, the nucleus inside the coma where we have gases uh, forming a little bit of a spherical region around here. And then we have the tail with the effect of the solar wind being important in streaming these particles back. A little interesting, 1910, uh, astronomers knew that the Earth would actually pass through the uh, thin tail of the comet. And uh, there became a little business of uh, people selling comet pills and remedies because astronomers could study the gases here. There are poisonous gases in the tail of the comet, but very, 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 very low abundance, though no threat. And the Earth made it just fine going through the tail of the comet without uh, ill effects. Uh, but some people took advantage of it and uh, sold uh, questionable uh, prescription medicines. No prescription required in 1910. Uh, sold questionable products trying to uh, uh, play on people's fears and get uh, uh, people to give them some money. Um, so why do we study comets? Again, the comets come from the very far edge of the solar system and they give us clues as to what the solar system was like in the past. Um, especially these comets that it's their first time going past the sun. Uh, the material that comes off is, is fresh material. So they're, uh, they're valuable to, uh, to study. And these clues to the solar system by studying the ices, the gases in the comet, we get some uh, information. And so here's a comet orbit. This one is not a very uh, long orbit, a very uh, large semi-major axis uh, going out past the orbit of Jupiter. And you can see how it uh, comes in to the inner solar system. Um, and then illustration here of what happens when a comet flies past the sun. It's comet uh, tail is always pointed away from the sun. The sun again has a solar wind that pushes the tail away from the comet. So we see this uh, movement of the tail always pointing away from the sun. And again the elliptical orbit, very elliptical orbit. The asteroids have more circular orbits. Here again the illustration of the comet tails. Um, the ion tail is straight away from the sun. So this blue tail, and then the yellow here representing the dust. Um, and the dust, light of, the light of the sun does push on the dust, but the dust particles have their orbit uh, going around the sun. And then the dust particles uh, reflect light to us. We can see reflected sunlight. Another illustration here of a, a comet, the sun down in the bottom here, and the solar wind pushing this gas tail straight away from the sun. The dust tail also gets a push, but it, these dust particles go in their orbit around the sun. So that's an introduction to comets. There'll be more on comets, more discussions coming, but that's just a uh, little bit of the history about uh, some of the uh, superstitions that uh, people had about comets in the past, and a little bit on the structure of the comet with the nucleus, the coma, the ion tail, and the dust tail. So keep reading and bring some questions to class.